welcome back GG's you know sleepy heads GG's guys and gals yeah in short but yeah you know um funny enough I did record like 10 minutes earlier but then Windows decided you know I want to update today now so there we go 10 minutes of corrupted footage so I had to scrap that since we're gonna be a little bit you know advanced because you might be confused where the fuck are we what's happening don't worry everyone I think we 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 got back together would you know no 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 we're friends right yeah yeah, yeah. we haven't cooked yet if you're new subscribe if you're not you know the drill watch my other videos you know this wow did not expect my fair protogen videos to pop off you know i really appreciate it thank you for the comments the likes and the views thank you hey we have a discord just join don't need to chat don't need to just join i want to see this freaking server blow up but we do have rules but yeah it seemed like we had known each other for a did i i was about to say did i have i read this i i was uh, never mind no 10 minutes corrupted gone done as promised i held juno as much as i could i tried to learn how to collect samples of course exclusively under her strict guidance i recalled everything i studied about nature at school i tried my best to become juno's assistant not a burden I helped her do some things in the jet. Juno even let me into her laboratory. She showed me everything there, although I still didn't understand most of her words. Juno laughed kindly and assured me that I would definitely figure it out in the future. I'm kind of curious what part 2 of this game is because... I mean, what's the goal right now? Technically speaking, Breezy's like goal is to be free and he technically got it, you know? Our journey ran through the whole world. And I didn't even know how big it really was. Of course, for Juno, our planet was tiny, but for me, it was boundless expanse. Or expanse. 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 Expanse like a pants. I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm. I don't know. It's just a bunch of words that I'm just slurring right now. For a guy who had lived all his life in one place, in one house, waking up every morning in a new place was a real miracle. More and more, I began to think about asking Juno to travel through space with her when her research on our planet was over. I didn't have enough of an imagination to picture what I would see there. I couldn't wait to go, even though I knew it would be extremely difficult to persuade Juno to take me with her. Maybe she'd never agreed to it. I didn't want to think about what would happen if Juno just flew away one morning just as she arrived, suddenly. Like a blast in the middle of a quiet forest. Would she forget about me? Leave it all behind? I couldn't imagine how I could possibly forget, how I could leave our friendship, our communication, our heart-to-heart -heart conversations behind my shoulders. For me, it was something new and so amazing that I didn't even want to imagine what it would be like to lose it. Sometimes I thought about my parents, about whether they thought about me, whether they remembered what happened to them to the village. From time to time, I dreamed that the village was completely destroyed, burned in a fire as soon as I left. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? The, pro the prophecy came true and was my fault. In these dreams, I felt hopeless and infinitely, inexpressibly guilt. Wait, did I read that correctly? Yes, I did. When I woke up in the morning, I was so depressed that even Juno noticed it and asked if I was alright. But I couldn't tell her what I was really thinking because I didn't want to turn these thoughts, these fears into words. Then it would make them a reality. Okay, I get it. This is, uh, this is, uh, his, this is pretty much, you know, he's worried. So I'm gonna skip some of this because I kind of feel like I get it now, you know? Once we, we know what he's thinking, he has a lot of these... Uh, problems or worries you know he's, wor he's a worried person i get it leaving it all behind as soon as we got out of the jet a strange smell hit our noses it smelled like rot or long dead meat we looked at each other and i realized that juno had also smelled it what is it that stinks so much i don't know maybe something died nearby hmm we went further along the path in the forest i began to look closely at the trees and shrubs around us they look completely different from what I remembered. In the pictures and the books, these places were drawn quite differently. Now the leaves of trees and shrubs were covered with strange red dots and lines. It seems that all the greener had withered, but why? It was still too early for winter and the air was quite warm. Should it be this way? I approached Juno, who was holding several wrinkled blackened leaves in her hands. No, it definitely shouldn't be like this. They're like... wilted. But it's too early for that. The weather is good. Winter isn't coming soon. Why did this happen? So there's some kind of rot going on. This is reminding me of... I don't know if anyone's gonna get this. 
Secure Contain Protect SCP the SCP universe you know, where they all those wacky some are what was it I forgot I forgot I forgot L stages of like how hard are they to con how hard or how difficult uh, would these entities be contained I forgot what it was called you know it's like no, I can't remember. I, for the love of me, I cannot remember. Juno frowned. It was clear from her helmet that she was deep in thought about something. I'll take samples. I think we need to find out what kind of disease this is. Do you think it's some kind of infection? Juno nodded intensely. This can't be an accident. Look at the forest. It's all like this. Even the grass. Some kind of rotting event is happening. What do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? It was a, there was panic in my voice. I didn't know what kind of trouble had happened to this forest, but there was clearly nothing good about the black spots in the plants. Same thing with our plants. If they had white spots, oh, we gotta we gotta spread with vinegar or some you know, pesticide or some shit. Just Juno shrugged, saying nothing in particular. I'm not sure. Maybe not. You can find out what it is, right? I will try, Brizzy. I promise. I accepted her answer, there was no better alternative anyway, but an unpleasant anxiety appeared in my chest. I'd never seen anything like this before. When the seasons changed and the leaves fell, it still didn't, didn't look like that. They never turned black, they turned yellow at most, and then when the heat came, they turned green again, but these plants seemed to be seriously ill. The whole forest smelled of rot, something heavy and dead, Juno's helmet had the same word expression on it that I had. We need to get out of here, I don't like it. What? Do you think it is dangerous? Maybe. It seems it seems to me that at that moment an animal's cry was heard from somewhere in the depths of the forest. It was frantic, desperate. The animal was struggling in agony. Oh yeah, strapped up, Brizzy. We're about to see what this whatever this thing is. Juno and I exchanged glances and without a word ran towards the sound. In the middle of the clear where we found ourselves, there was a Three horn. It was a large, once beautiful animal with five hooves and three horns on its head. Its eyes, usually yellow, had turned white, and black blood flowed from its mouth. It smelled like a corpse, like rotten meat, as if the three horn had long since died, although we saw it convulsing. What happened to it? What's wrong? I don't know. We need to run some tests and find out. We're not taking it to Pixie, are we? Juno shook her head empathetically. Of course not, if that's what I'm thinking about. What are you thinking about? I really like to know. This is my planet after all. Juno walked up to the three horn and looked at the dying animal with regret. What do you call them? Three horn I keep saying three. Like with an with an H. Tree. There's a tree there. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Three horns. They are herbivores, mostly harmless if they if you don't try to scare them very cute creatures. I'll take samples. Just Juno squatted down and crushed her skull with her thick meaty thighs. I'm just kidding everybody, that was not part of the script. Uh, she reached for the black viscous pool of blood and took a sample on a special stick. Let's get out of here, I'll tell you everything as soon as we get on the jet, it's not safe here. Juno and I set off at a brisk pace in the opposite direction, just in case she took out her gun while I heard after her. My heart was clenching my chest with fear. What happened to this forest? What happened to this animal? Why did Juno react like that? It's an infection. Black blood. When we were in the jet, Pixie greeted us with a standard greeting but immediately said, Juno, I must warn you, there's an unknown virus on the ship. I know, Pixie. We brought it. We need to understand what it is. Be careful. It could be dangerous. Virus? I mean, like the flu? It's hardly that harmless. You saw what happened to that three horn Juno took my backpack with samples and told Pixie to take off she decided to go back to where we were yesterday and stay in a safe place the plague huh I followed Juno to her lab sorry if, the, if you can hear some of that squeaky sound that's pretty much from my chair you promise to tell me what it is Breezy I you promise if there's some kind of disease I want to know how dangerous it is for the plant and how it can be stopped Juno sighed, she put all the samples we collected on the table and immediately put on protection, gloves, and a special suit. Listen, I don't really understand it myself. I think it's some kind of virus and if I'm right, we need to inform your village urgently. If this virus is serious as I think it is, it will spread all over the planet. We need to find out if there is a chance to stop it, where it came from and... If there's a chance, it's, a, it's possible there isn't one? 
Brizzy, I'm no magician. I ain't no Doctor Strange where I could just whip out the spell book and say, Hey, we're good. Yes, I'm a scientist, but this doesn't mean that I can do everything. It may not work out, and then we will need to figure out what to do. And the most important thing is whether this virus is dangerous to humans. I could feel my heart beating wildly in my chest. Juno set to work working on her instruments. Promise that you will tell me everything when you find out something. Of course, Brizzy. Go get some rest. Chat with Pixie. I don't like where this is going. I decided not to disturb Juno and follow her advice. Alright. After leaving the lab, I didn't know what to do, so I just collapsed into a chair and tried to pull myself together. So what did we have? Some unknown virus that killed plants and animals? I've never seen this before, so I was really scared. Thoughts of my parents in the village immediately flashed into my head. What if the virus got there too? What should we do about it? The worst part was that I couldn't help in any way. I tried to calm myself down, having no other options to cope with the, with the panic. Maybe this virus wasn't as scary as I thought. At least if it wasn't harmful to people, yes, livestock and crops may die, but we could cope with this. We already had bad years before, and back then we survived them all together. I told myself that it was impossible to lose my temper right now and give up. After all, Juno was on my side, a scientist from another planet. She knew exactly what to do with all this. Yes. Orbital bombarded. Bombardment. This, this planet, gone. Get it out of here. Throw it, chuck it in a black hole. For several hours, I restlessly roamed around the jet and tried to occupy myself with something, but to no avail. At some point, I fell into a chair and even managed to take a nap, but the rest of the service sleep didn't last long. Oh no, Juno came out from the lab, and from the look of her, I understand she didn't have any good news. Well, did you find out anything? Something. Pixie, keep an eye on the lab. Yes, Juno. Will you tell me? Juno sat down opposite me, me with a heavy sigh. I think it's a virus, and this virus is very dangerous. Judging by what I have managed to find out at the moment, it spreads very quickly through the air and through touch. It kills carriers and remains in already dead organisms for a while. I tried to kill the virus with cold or heat, but the effects of temperatures don't cause it any harm. Listen, Breezy, I don't want to scare you, but I think it's very serious. You need to return home immediately. Our journey is over. I assume that it can be stopped somehow, and I will try to do everything I can to help your planet. I gripped the arms of the chair, feeling my heart pounding in my chest. It was beating faster with every word Juno said. No, 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 wait, wait, what are you talking about? What do you mean I have to go back? What about you? I'm going back to my ship. This jet is only part of the ship. The ship itself is waiting for me in orbit. There I have more devices, more tools. I can try to create a cure. And you should be with your loved ones and... No, 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 no. But you're my loved one. Hey, you got that. Got that Brizzy Rizzy, you know? That's why it's part of the name, because he got that game. No, 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 wait, what are you talking about, Juno? This is my planet, my house, and if it's in danger, I'm not going to sit idly by. I will help you in any way I can. It would be much better if there were two of us. I was about to. Brizzy, it can be very dangerous. What if you get infected, or what if you get infected? Juno was signed for a couple of moments, but then she'll she shook her head. Still, you'd better go back. My god, these mosquitoes are killing me, man. I don't want to be constantly distracted by you rizzing me every damn second. I don't want to let it happen again. Let it happen. Dun, 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 dun. I sighed immediately, realizing where these worries were growing from. Juno frowned, turning, turning me away from me again. You know nothing will happen to me. I'm the MC, the prophesized chosen one. If I do get God, that it, that may be my fate. But right now, I got the fight, think spirit. I got the willpower to go through with it. I won't be much better at home anyway than with you. With the virus spreading so fast, then my village may be in danger. It's already gone. Juno was silent, apparently trying to decide how to proceed. I'd never touched Juno like that before. Gently squeezing her palm, saying that I was here next to her and nothing would happen to me. Did I read that correctly, everyone? Gently squeezing her palm. No! Damn you, it should have been me, not him! In fact, I've never touched anyone like that, even my parents. They didn't need my support, they tried to support me, but it never worked out. Now I felt more ready for battle than ever, more, more motivated than ever. Maybe that was my purpose. Who knew? Help Juno with the cure? If I was going to die, then so be it. Juno, I'm not going anywhere, sister. I'll stay with you and we'll get through this together. And if you fail, what then? 
Juno drooped even more, but her hand squeezed mine in response. Her warm... Get your hand off her, Brizzy. She's mine. <laughs> Some of you are asking, how do you pronounce my name? A sleepy. Or leapy. Or ass. Sli actually, a sleepy or leapy. Either way. Oh my god, I hit the mic. It's over. It's over. There we go. Her warm, thin fingers gently squeezed mine. For a moment, my heart skipped a beat. Then we will think about what to do next, okay? We will solve problems as they occur. I smiled at her encouragingly. Juno was silent for a few moments, squeezing my hand and then gave up. Fine. You're probably right. Pixie, let's go to the ship. We need to decide what to do with all this. Yes, Juno. The jet shook and soon we soared into the sky. Alright, let's see. Oh wow, Juno's ship hovering like Tilly in the sky was much bigger than I thought. It was huge! I'd never seen anything like it before. Our planet could be seen from the huge windows. It was so small, defenseless in appearance. My heart sank at the mere thought that it would soon be destroyed. I have to confess something. I turned to Juno who was sitting in the big captain's chair. What? You see, I came to your planet for a reason. For the last few years, I've been chasing some kind of anomaly. It was like it was moving through space. I don't know how, but it was jumping from planet to planet. Every time I arrived at those planets, there was no one and nothing left to help. Even the virus was already dead. My sensors detected that the anomaly was approaching your planet, but I was hoping that it would bypass you. However, as you can see, this didn't happen. Did you say that this disease may not be dangerous for humans? I was hoping for that. A virus can't be dangerous for all creatures, only for a small number of species, which is true. Unless they can jump for for a virus to evolve and jump to another species it's wild okay it can happen but it has to be to the extremist extreme point you know either it was made from a lab or somehow god-given miracles such miracles in a bad way like the virus in a perfect condition evolved but yeah there were no humans or large animals on previous planets, and I hoped that the virus was killing only plants and small animals, but it turns out this isn't the case. Wait, but if the virus can be dangerous for every species, why then? It can't kill everything unless it's artificially created. I froze, frowning and barely digesting Juno's words. What do you mean? That someone created this virus and perhaps created it specifically for your galaxy, but I don't know who or why. And I don't know if I'm right, we need more samples, more materials. So this an anomaly is now on my planet. Yes, but I don't know if this is a living creature that infects everything around or a clot of energy. Ooh, that changes things. If it's not a creature, like a virus, which technically is not. It's not an organism. But it can also be classified as one. Because, I mean, there are seven things that could, you know, distinguish what's alive or not. It kind of falls to the... Yeah, it kind of has four of the characteristics of the seven. But, you know, it's like... It's like half and half. Do you know where it is? Yes, but you can't go there like this. You need to first create some kind of protection, perhaps develop immunity, and for that, we need more samples. I press my lips together, and then I kiss, you know, her, and, and I'm just kidding, everybody. Feeling an unspeakable weight on my shoulders, everything suddenly became so complicated, serious, and dangerous that I didn't know how to react. It was as if a gloomy black night had suddenly fallen in the middle of a clear day and I didn't know what to do with it. And Juno's confusion scared me even more. Then you need to collect samples. That's what we're going to do, okay? It was necessary to stay stern and not let panic get the better of the situation. This is what my parents and teachers taught me to always control my condition. And not to give in to anxiety? God damn, we all tried every day we pushed through anxiety. Some have it more, some have it less. Some have it in the middle. Ah, damn. Juno feigned a smile and nodded. She got up, came to me, and stood in front of a huge window. You're right, Brizzy. We will work together. I I promise that I will try to do everything in my power to help you and your planet. I won't give up. I'll do everything I can. I can. I give you my word. We were standing opposite each other. I felt my heart filled with warmth from just looking at Juno from her voice from the faint smile depicted on her helmet. Comment down below. Would you Riz a uh, furry protogen? Like, I'm not talking about her. Like, just any furry protogen. I'm talking about not not a person in a furry suit, okay? Like an actual species of a furry protogen. Or maybe you're more of a scaly type. I don't know. I know, these are degenerate questions. So calm down. 
I've never experienced anything like this. Such engagement, such support. At some point, it seemed to me that I just had to had to hug her. That was what I did. I leaned forward and hugged Juno tightly to me. Man, Breezy got that Rizzy in his name and he got that in action. Gosh darn, son. She froze, not immediately realizing what was happening, and then hugged me back, folding her hands around my neck. We stood like this for several long minutes. I didn't know how much time had passed. It was warm and good in her arms, and I thought about what it would be like to stay with her forever. Just as my parents had been with each other all my life, I wanted to be with... Oh, oh my god, man. This is... This is... All right. All right. All right, this is, oh, this is making my heart flutter. I can lie. Ew, what a cringy statement. They thought, the thought was sudden, bright as a shooting star, and I never wanted anything as much. My head started beating faster, and I hugged Juno even tighter. I wish I could stand here with her forever, snuggle up to each other, and not think about anything, leaving all my problems in the past. Thank you. I whispered these words in her ear, Juno pulled me closer to her, burying her face in my shoulders, and at that moment, I realized that I was completely hopelessly in love with her. Damn! That's, that, is that how you fall in love? You gotta be in space? Alright, everybody. We all gotta be need, we, we all gotta need to take this, uh, the astronaut program by NASA, you know, or some other country with space tech. Holy balls of the walls. started working on a cure. Actually, Juno started in the meantime, I tried to help her in any way I could. We were collecting samples, Juno had given me a huge strange suit that was a little too big for me and didn't let me out of the jet without it. Collecting samples wasn't easy, most of the animals infected with the virus became extremely aggressive before death. A couple of times, we barely escaped from the enraged fangers who chased us all the way to the jet until Juno pulled out her rifle and shot them. Damn, my gal got that gun, she got that accuracy, she a dead eye, dead shot kind of gal. It seemed that the virus was simply driving its carriers crazy. Yeah, just like any other virus, it wants to spread. Standing over the corpses of animals, I thought only about how to stop it all. On the ship, I spent more and more time hanging around Juno in the, around Juno in the lab. Juno would keep me updated on almost all her actions, despite being tired. And even if I didn't understand everything, even if it wasn't easier, even if it wasn't easier for me than speaking an unfamiliar alien language backwards, I still tried to understand until my brain creaked from the strain just to get up to speed. The connection between Juno and I was Juno and I was getting stronger every day. I could imagine an hour without her. All right, man, this guy is hopelessly in love, man. It's over. It's tied down. You know, they just gotta... Where's the ring? Where's the ring, everyone? Where's the, the... 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 The ribbon, the bow, knot. Whoa, pause. I told Juno what it was like for me in the village, how I was being prepared to become the chosen one, and in response, she shared stories about her adventures with Toshi. She talked about distant planets, about different worlds, beautiful and ugly, hospitable and aggressive. And the longer it lasted, the more deeply I fell in love with Juno. Sometimes it seemed that this feeling was so strong, so huge that it would soon run out of space and be cramped with my, within my chest. But I didn't know how to tell her about it, or how to choose the right words. Aww, one evening we were sitting opposite each other after a long hard day. Sorry, I had to like, calm down. Why do you want to help our planet so much? She was distracted from her thoughts. What do you mean? I'm also curious, what's driving her? What is this? What is what motivates you? What is this interest with saving planets and shit? I get the studying part, scientists and all, curiosity, not to learn more, but you know to go beyond your duties. Hmm. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, our plan is probably just one of many for you. Why do you want to help us so badly? Cause I'm bad. I'm down bad for you, Brizzy. Hey, she got that Riz as well. She got that space Riz, that fur Riz. You know, she got that proto gen Riz embedded inside her, in her genes. Don't know. I just want to help, and I want to help you. You are a great human, Brizzy, and I'm very glad that you became have become my friend. Ooh, friend zone already. Thank you, and I'm really glad I found you too. That we met. My heart was beating very fast in my chest. This guy's about to have a heart attack. Who knew what awaited us next? If all our plans would work out, what if I got infected and died with everyone else? For the first time in my life, I was in love and I wanted Juno to know about it. 
I never thought I'd meet someone like you. That is, I didn't even hope, to be honest. Juno looked at me with a positive expression on her face. What are you talking about? But I mean that, damn, it turns out it's not so easy to say it. Damn, this guy's gonna confess? Way out in space? But then again, no one can hear or feel the awkwardness, the, the cringe if whatever happens next after, right? If we, if we get rejected, closure. If we don't, damn, this guy scored a baddie. What I mean that, damn, it turned, uh, yeah. it smiled sheepishly, Junior tilted her head to the side like a bird. Say what? What do you mean, Brizzy? I shifted my chair, gathered my thoughts. I couldn't turn back. I'd already started. Uh, well, I've, how do I say, I've never felt this way. Uh, but I think, oh God, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm, ooh, I mean, Oh damn, this is hard. This is hard, you know, you know, I'm in love with you. If well if you understand, if you have that in your culture, I hesitantly fell aside and not know what else to say. The thoughts in my head were confused, each one was stupider than the next. I must have looked terribly awkward. I must have looked like a down bad motherfucker. Red with embarrassment. I didn't even know Juno understand understood me. Maybe there was no word or concept of love. Or I was wrong. A reddish blue blush was reflected on Juno's helmet. Brizzy, are. Uh, uh, Nani? Feeling my heart flutter, I nodded. Yes, absolutely. 100,000%. Agreed. One. Uh huh. S turned on, switched on. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd say that's a, that's a positive. Uh, uh huh. Agreed. I've never fallen in love with anyone, but I'm sure I'm in love with you. That's it. Damn! How can you be so sure if you've never been in love? I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know. I just feel that way. Juno paused, thinking about something. She looked out the window again. I didn't expect her to immediately rush into my arms, but I wanted her to know. And as soon as I voiced it, my heart felt somehow more at ease. I've always been so afraid to get attached, especially after Toshi. But now, I don't know why, but I feel it for you too, Brizzy. Oh my god! Match made in. Wait. Made in heaven. <sighs> yes, yes. I watch anime. Calm down, everybody. Jojo. I want to be near you. I want. Oh, wow. She timidly fell silent, and I feel my heart flutter. Whispered, Destiny, right? Juno laughed softly. Right. After that, everything happened by itself. Whoa, I don't remember how close we got to each other, but Juno snuggled up to me and I to her. In that moment, everything, every action we did felt so right that didn't focus on the specifics of it. Whoa. Whoa. My god, chat, is this real? Calm down, YouTube. Nothing's happening. Literally, she's... She got the fur, she got the suit. Calm down. Just, uh... Touching her, my intuition told me what to do. All right, do I cut the video here? Come back, everybody! My God, that was like a that was like a good three minutes of me just quickly uh, trying to move past on the subject. She got dressed, everyone. It's basically seen us all this time. Juno laughed out loud when she heard that this guy shamed my voice. We continued to work on the medicine in the in. In the incessant race against time, the only place we found solace was in each other's arms. Next to each other, we could really relax, throw away all our thoughts. I understood that soon we would have to cross another line in a rapidly developing relationship, but I was terribly worried because I had never been with a girl before, which was a bit shameful for me as a guy. Wow, this really is an old, old civilization, my man. Most of all, I was, I was afraid to lose face right in front of Juno. When the next day came to an end, Juno and I went to the sleeping compartment. There was a huge bed on which we now slept together. Juno didn't go into the capsule anymore, deciding that the bed was big enough for the two of us. Work all right, welcome back everyone. After Sandra was barking, after all the fiasco with you know with the protogen lady over here, you know, you know, I can't really show that on YouTube, everyone, unless you want this whole channel to be deleted. I'm not even joking. Work on the cure wasn't easy. Every day we became more and more convinced that we were dealing with a much more dangerous thing than just a simple vi virus. Juno spent more and more time in the laboratory and we went down from the ship to Earth less and less. On the height of our jet, it was clearly visible how the virus was devouring forests. They turned black as if a flame had passed over them and when we went down to take samples, even the birds couldn't be heard. The whole planet seemed to be dying right before our eyes. 
Sorry, Breezy, but it seems to me that everything is much more serious than we thought. I was lying in the bed looking at the ceiling. Juna had been working the lab all day. Well, she worked for the most part and I just hung around and tried to lend a helping hand at every opportunity. Well, I think so too. If I can't do anything, Juno don't, you can. I sat up on the bed and took her hand. Juno looked at me with sadness on her face. I'm not that powerful, Brizzy. I may not succeed and then I want you to... Let's just not think about it, okay? Let's look at things more positively. We still have time, right? Juno shrugged and said doubtfully. Well, I hope so. Great, then let's just get distracted for now, okay? Alright, welcome back everybody. My god, these two are... This the rapid development, man. For... Before they were like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say if I like this guy, you know. And now they're like just doing it everywhere on the damn ship. Every moment they can chillax. And I mean do it, I mean do it. Yeah. The moment of truth awaits us tomorrow. Do not turn to me as soon as they enter the bedroom of their long day of work. I had just come out of the shower stall, which I had kind of learned to cope with, and I wanted to get into bed with Juno as soon as possible. Damn, this guy is down bad. If this attempt fails, I don't know what else to do. This virus seems to be mutating. It spreads to the carriers, carriers and devours them in a matter of hours. That's why it's so difficult to get the cure out. We will succeed. If not now, then... If not now, then it will be too late. I'm sorry to say this, Breezy, but that's what I'm afraid of. That it will be too late. I sighed, saying nothing against it. I was thinking about going to my parents, if you don't mind. I want to see them, make sure they're alright. I think they have already realized that something terrible is happening. You wanna squeeze my hand in hers as a sign of support. Of course, this is the right decision, but I'll give you a protective suit. You can't land without it right now. You're gonna get it infected and then... I don't want to think about what might happen then. I don't want to lose you. Aw? I promise, I'm the MC. I found her in the lab the next morning. Yes, they did it again. My god, it was only like... Two minutes in, again. My goodness. The day I knew would be the day of all days. Juno was visibly nervous. She got up before me, took a shower, and then immediately sat down in the laboratory. When I found her, she was standing at one of the devices, fully dressed, and watched the numbers on the display that only she understood. I walked over and stood behind her, putting my hand on her back between her shoulder blades. Well, any progress? So I read that really fast and skipped that real fast as well. She sighed. She was extremely tense. I could feel her muscles tensing under my hand. We'll know when this analysis is over. If everything worked out, then we have a cure. I'll give it to you right away, and then... We'll figure it out how to give it to the whole planet. She nodded and gave me a weak smile. Correct, we need to do this at all costs, but this analysis will solve everything. Come on, there's no point in standing there. Or here, nothing depends on you anymore. No, I'll stay here. I don't want anything to go wrong with computers. Besides, I can't think about anything else. I'd rather find out the results as soon as possible and tell you. Do you mind if I take a jet and visit my village? I've been thinking about this for the last few months for some reason. I felt that nothing good was waiting for me there, but I understood that I had to do it. It no longer mattered how my parents and the residents of the village would, village would greet me. It didn't matter what they would say, whether they called me crazy or busy. I tried not to think about it. I didn't want to let dark thoughts take control over me, but I couldn't completely banish, banish these thoughts from my head. I might this video right here, we're 41, 42 minutes in. Might be 35 when I edit it out. Some of the stuff, of course, maybe less. But yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully you subscribe. Join the Discord. Don't worry. We'll fill that, we'll fill that motherfucker up real quick. Or maybe not. Might take like a, a few years or so. But hey, we'll know whatever you're doing right now. Good night. See ya.